Situated between the Arctic and Atlantic Oceans, Greenland is almost entirely covered with ice. However, the relentless march of global warming has triggered a concerning transformation, recording major ice loss over the past few decades. We are here at the Greenlandic Ice Sheet. It's the biggest ice cube on the Northern Hemisphere. It's 2,700 kilometers north-south and 1,000 kilometers east-west. Oh, that's big. What was it like having extreme hair in season one? That was great. It was the first big international sport event in Greenland, so we were very proud that we could hold that here. And it was also good to have focus on the climate change. I think Greenland is the frontier of climate change. We experience a climate change every day. So when you come here and realize that, as I have, I really hope that not just for Greenland, but also for yourself, is going to change your behavior, your use of CO2 and so on, because else we are changing the world to a worse place than, than it was. It's something you never see anywhere else. I mean, we have glaciers and stuff in Norway, but not on this size. We are actually standing on the ice sheet, as you can see here. 25 years ago, it was much more ice. It was always like up to there where you see all the sand and rocks. So it melted a lot because the ice cap is almost like in here. It's very sad to see actually because it's melting even faster now than it did before and to actually see it with your own eyes. I think that's the most dramatic way to see it. From this special corner of the planet, Hedda Hossas connected with Professor Richard Washington, head of Extreme's scientific committee. Hello, Richard. How are you? Hello, Hedda. I'm very much wishing I was there with you. That's an amazingly blue sky behind you. Yeah, That's it's nice. amazing weather. We've been very lucky. So yesterday I was on the ice sheet and I heard the ice is melting faster and faster. Yeah, that's right, Ted. It's, uh, you know, in between the short years that it takes for us to get back to Greenland, that rate has increased a lot. And the new data comes from a very, very comprehensive study of about a quarter of a million new observations from 200 and something glaciers across Greenland. We're very fortunate to have Professor Peter Warrens, one of the great experts on ice and ice melts on our science committee in Extreme E. And Peter's flagged the increasing rate of ice melts in Greenland. He was the first to point out the thinning of ice from work that he did from data from submarines a long time ago, back in the Cold War years. And the number that they've picked out now maps on to about 30 million tons an hour of meltwater. Incredible mm -hmm. number. It's pretty hard to imagine how much water that is. It equates to about 16 million of the extreme E cars. And those weigh about two tons each, as you know, they're, they're pretty heavy. Yeah. For those who haven't seen those cars firsthand, it's about 2,970 Eiffel Towers, 577 <laughs> Sydney Harbour Bridges, and 60 Khalifa Towers. So it's, you know, that's per hour. It's mind-boggling size of water loss. What does that mean for the rest of the world? A key response will be sea level rise. There's a million years worth of ice locked up in Greenland. If all of that melted, then we'd be looking at seven meters of global sea level rise. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, that would take out a lot of cities around the world. So in the fjords, the icebergs are warming things up. Yeah, that sounds a, a bit contradictory, doesn't it? Because you normally put ice in drinks to cool them down. But there's been some new studies that, are, as I understand it, are arguing that there's a separation in the fjords between that fresh water floating on top of the salty warmer water below. And that warmer water below then moves into the fjord and can essentially melt the ice below the surface. So Heta, I reckon you should jump on a boat and go and have a look at this for yourself. Andreas joined Hedda on a journey around the Elulisat Ice Fjord to learn about ice and icebergs firsthand with local guide Mick Ale. 100,000 years ago, the icebergs were part of the ice cap. And they run into the, the glacier and, and eventually it will carve, fall into the, the fjord. And all the icebergs we have out here broke off about a year ago. Mm. It takes one year from it breaks off till it reaches uh, this point where we are right now. This one wasn't here five days ago. This one, the big thing the here? The big one right here. What? Yeah. So it's moving very fast. 
Did you hear that? Great. This is the black ice. It's pure water that has been melted on the glacier or the ice cap. Shiny. It looks like a trophy. When summer comes, the temperature will go up and a lot of the ice cap will begin to melt. And all the water from the ice cap will run into uh, cracks or be collected in water reservoirs on the ice cap. And when winter comes again, the temperature will drop and it will freeze. And this time it will freeze without all the air bubbles. So we can try to, to break some of uh, the white piece right there and uh, pick it up and then you can uh, compare it. Yeah, pick this one up. We actually got to learn about the black ice and also the normal ice, which is the white one here with air in it, which is lighter than actually the, which this one is called the black ice, which is much heavier and actually dangerous, as Mikael told us about. The color in that ice take its color from the ocean, so it's very hard to see, especially during the night where the guys are using their fish boats, driving in, in a high speed and they don't see the black ice, all of a yeah. sudden they hit it and it can be a devastating accident from it. Racing has taken us many places, but I never saw myself going to Greenland. It's breathtaking to be here. It's incredible scenery and it's, it doesn't do justice in a camera. It's so much nicer and cooler and colder than on the camera lens. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's incredible. <laughs>